Thanks so much for joining us on Skills Update from World Skills Africa 2022 Swakopmund, held for only the second time on the African continent. I'm your host, Brandon Thomas, and during this hour, we'll update you on day two of this major continental showpiece. Speak to movers and shakers who are breaking stereotypes when it comes to technical, vocational, education, and training TVET in the 21st century. We'll also cross over to our roving reporter, Emil Seibert, to give us an update on the progress made on the skills competition floor. And we'll also be crossing over to Ilago Shitatela, who is at the exhibition hall uh, to give us an update of what is there. All of this taking place from the Dome in Swakopmund. We'll be right back. International, we focus on the skill development. The pioneer skill competition in 2016 in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, was only three skills. And 2018 in Kigali, Rwanda, we have the six skills. And now in Swakomo, we have the 16 skills to participate. It is a great opportunity to inspire the people, inspire the young people to learn the skill. Of course, skill competition is a very important tool because we want to young people to participate TVET. The first thing is we had to attract their interest. Now today we can see so many young generation that come to the skill competition, the venue. So they have a chance to go around the different skill. So they make influence their mind. They may find that some skill they interest. So they will go to study and then appraise the skill. As a country, we have um, uh, four, uh, three teams composing of four competitors, and the one that you have seen is in a mechatronic, which is one of the skills that is supporting the big four in the area of manufacturing. We also want to expose these uh, young people to uh, the rest of the world and also to the industry that will be their potential um, employers in the future. They are able also to um, share experiences with their peers uh, from all over Africa. Okay. My experience working in the here around it was very amazing and I was surprised because some of the skills that I saw I never knew of. And I really got an idea of some skills I never knew of and some ideas that I might want in the future. The World Skills Africa, it has been such a privilege to be here because experiencing youth around here, it's quite a very ex uh, nice feeling to be here. And what I love about myself, I love, I love exploring, I love seeing different types of things, and I love myself most. I require, and 
therefore what we are doing here is to make sure that we close that uh, cup of mismatch of skills to the industry demands. And if we are able to do that, we are going to increase the number of people that are going to transit from our institution to the place of work. And also we are going to um, encourage others through entrepreneurship to make sure that they start their own businesses all right, so that they will not only be looking for employment. We hope the young people can learn the skill and use their skill they learn, use the power of skill to change their own life, to change their community, to change their country, to change Africa. Thank you very much. Welcome back. We are broadcasting live from World Skills Africa 2022, Swakopmund. And uh, this event would have not been possible had it not been for the major, especially funding partners here in Namibia and, of course, across the globe. Joining me now is one of those uh, partners that have been quite supportive of this um, event. He is the project manager of GIZ Namibia, Mr. Jerry Bierkes and he's responsible for the promotion of vocational education and training pro-vet project in Namibia on behalf of GIZ Namibia. Mr. Bikas, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Friendland. Good to be here this morning and uh, to be part of World Skills Africa Moon 2022. And I'm sure a lot of people uh, uh, share your sentiments. Mr. Bikas, before we speak a little bit about uh, GIZ and its involvement in, in World Skills Africa 2022, you were the former CEO of the Namibia Training Authority, which is uh, very much involved um, you know, in the organization of this uh, project. And, and you've been part of it uh, before um, you, you joined GSA Namibia. Tell us about the effort that really went into planning an event of this, this magnitude. Thank you, Fringlin, um, and good morning to our viewers as well. Um, yes, this all started in 20, 20, uh, 2019 when we went to Russia for the World Skills International Competition in Kazan. At that event, um, there's an African chapter of World Skills International where we competed with uh, Egypt and Ghana to win the rights, as it were, to host the, World Sk the second uh, World Skills Africa competition. And um, Egypt then pulled out or withdrew at the last minute, and we had the opportunity to really uh, compete with Ghana. And uh, Namibia won the rights through World Skills Namibia and the Namibia Training Authority and the Ministry of Higher Education, Technology and Innovation to host the World Skills Africa competition. Initially slated for 2020, but due to COVID then postponed to 2022. So how does it feel for you right now, especially personally, to see this finally unfolding? We've come full circle, uh, <laughs> yes. And with the team support back then in my, in my previous role as, as the NTA CEO, it was my task to do the, 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 the pitch, the presentation, and to convince the African stakeholders who were there, that Namibia is the right place, and more so Swakopmund for this particular event. Um, and yes, uh, it's just, I am extremely delighted to be here. Um, I left the NTA then in, in September, at the end of September 2020, but I knew back then that the team would really pull through. And I'm, I'm pleased to be here now as the ProVed manager in GIZ Namibia, supporting the NTA and working still with the NTA as our key implementing partner and the Ministry of Higher Education, of course, as our political partner. Now, let's talk about that support that GIZ Namibia you know, has provided to um, uh, World Skills Africa 2022 Swakopmund. Why that decision to pledge and, and to really support um, this project? So perhaps to give a bit of context, uh, the private project of GIZ Namibia has two components, funded 
by the German government through the Ministry for International Cooperation and Development, and the second component funded by the European Union. And when this topic came up in the steering committee meeting of ProVet, where we have representatives from the Ministry of Higher Education, NTA, uh, the embassy, the German embassy in Namibia, uh, the National Planning Commission, the representatives of the German embassy in the European Union on our steering committee as ProVet immediately said, well, we are here to support the NTA. Promotion of TBET or vocational, technical, vocational education and training is high up on the development cooperation agenda in the TVET space. And so that became an immediate consideration for the German government through the, the local embassy and also for the European Union as a, a one of the, the partners co-financing a component uh, that ProVet is implementing. So that's how it all uh, came about. Our task as ProVet was then to go through the approval processes with the, the German Ministry for International Cooperation and Development and the European Union to get the necessary support. And through that, uh, as the EU ambassador said during the opening ceremony on Monday evening, 500,000 euro was availed for the World Skills Africa competition. It's quite interesting that, uh, you know, through the involvement of GIZ Namibia and uh, through that the, the German government, Germany is one of those countries really applauded for um, uh, promoting uh, 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 vocational training or promoting TVET. What is it, do you think, that Namibia, especially at a conference of this nature, can learn from countries like Germany? So there is a lot to be learned. Uh, and when you go to the global stage, World Skills International, you can really see, firstly, it, it's about promotion of vocational education and training because um, at, at the, you know, the international, the global stage, when you're there, you realize that um, the children that, who would typically go into uh, engineering and, and uh, architecture and medicine in our context are in Tibet. And so firstly, it's about getting talent into the system, young, talented Namibians into the TVET system. That's how you build skills. That's how you build economies. And we're learning a lot from Germany also in terms of the dual training or dual apprenticeship training program that we've implemented now, re-implemented in Namibia in 2017, where training takes place mostly in, within companies and businesses. And that's a game changer for TVET in general. So lots of lessons that we're taking from, from Germany. But for the German government, they've been uh, supporting Namibia through development cooperation since independence in 1990, but more so in vocational training since 2012. So ProVet is now in its second phase. The German government at the, uh, at the last uh, government to government negotiations in October last year, recommitted to continue supporting TVET. And so we're now planning a third phase for ProVet that will be commencing in July this year. And that's indicative of the, the fact that the German government is here to support us uh, in a number of sectors, but TVET is high up on the development agenda. And I think as a country, we should be grateful. And there's a lot of knowledge transfer happening in this process and the support that we obviously giving to the ministry and NTA to develop and reform the TVET system in Namibia will continue at least for now until the end of 2024. Now, it's not only the skills competition that's taking place here at World Skills Africa 2022, but you also have the career exhibition that gives especially young people in, an opportunity to, you know, to go and see what kind of jobs are out there um, in the TVET sector, that you do not necessarily just have to be academically inclined, that I can do so much more with my hands. We've seen, I've seen when I was in, in the, the skills area and the exhibition area yesterday, so many young people, uh, school learners that were touring um, the exhibition hall. Um, what message do you have for young people, uh, even watching right now, all over the world, even in, in uh, some African countries that we are broadcasting, what message do you have for them? My message is a simple one to, to our youngsters out there um, still considering career options. TVED can give you uh, meaningful options. 
it can be highly rewarding. And, and we have a lot of ambassadors in the TVET system in Namibia, highly successful, some entrepreneurs and operating in that space, employing others. And that's really what we, what we want to see happening in our TVET system. That, and, and I go back to the phrase, catch them while they're young. Yeah. And that's essentially what this competition is all about. The careers exhibition is all about. To, to create awareness amongst the youth, and not just the youth, also the parents, because sometimes it's the mindset of the parent that needs to change, so that as parents we can say, well, if my child is interested in a career in Tibet, I should support my child. It should not just be about higher education. There's impact that can be created in the Tibet space as well. And so I think at the end of the day, it's, it's an issue of mindset for us as parents as well mm -hmm. to say, look, I am ready to support my child to pursue a career in yeah. Tibet. Mr. Jerry Birkus, Promotion of vocation, uh, Vocational Education and Training ProVet uh, Project a Manager of GIZ in Namibia. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your experiences. I know you're a very busy man. You have to go back to the TVET conference, but I'm sure we'll be touching with you again. Thank you, Fremlin. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Beakers. We'll be taking a break and we'll return with more after this. So youth, if you are happy to be here, when I greet you, your response will tell me if you are happy. Good morning! school one country event this event today is all about cultural exchange we have reached out to our schools some time ago challenging our learners to do some research to learn more about their paired country and that country's values traditions and cultures the old names of DRC goes as follow firstly Congo Free State Secondly, Belgian Congo. Thirdly, the Republic of Congo Leopoldville. Fourthly, the Republic of Zaire. Zaire is a term meaning Great River. Then the fifth and current name, which is Democratic Republic of Congo. Ethiopian cooking is some of the tastiest, healthiest, and most diverse cuisine on the continent. And unlike many African countries, it's a haven for vegetarians. The simple reason for this is that most Ethiopians follow a particular strand of Orthodox Christianity that prohibits the eating of any animal products on Wednesdays and Fridays. The colors of the flag. So red uh, represents the blood of those who died in the country's struggle for independence. Gold uh, represents uh, the country's uh, mineral wealth. Green symbolizes the country's um, rich forest and the black star in the middle, this one, represents the load star of African freedom. As you can see on the side of the coastline, we have the Nama Desert and Sosasli and Naukraft Park. Our desert is the oldest desert in the world. This is actually the picture of how Madagascar drifted away from Africa 200 million years ago. Madagascar originated from a severe earthquake that separated it from Africa 200 million years ago. This separation from continental mainland caused the island to drift 250 miles northeast and settled for about 35 to 45 million years. Rwanda, known for a thousand years, is located in the south equator, bordered by Tanzania, Uganda, Burundi and Tiashi. 
Rwanda has a population over 12.6 million living on 26,338 kilometers of land and most is the most densely populated. One million people live in the capital and largest city, Kigali. Apart from the districts, there is only one city which is the heart of Uganda and it is Kampala. Kampala is a beautiful city built around seven hills, not far from the shores of Lake Victoria. This canvas, it's a center of uh, Sokop Mund. So we decided to give such gift for them to remember Sokop Mund. So it's written, gifted from Frederick Primary School. And I wish for them to come back to Sokop Mund and also to visit Frederick We Thank you. The Zambian tribes. The Zambians are primarily Bantu-speaking people belonging to about 70 ethnic groups. According to the CIA World Factbook, some of the largest ethnic groups in the country include the Bembe, Tonga, Chiwa, Lozi, and Senge people. We the LRCs are here on behalf of Swakopmund Primary School representing South Africa! Isn't it interesting that Vikalazi Street boasts in Soweto boasts with two Nobel Prize winners, namely Nelson Mandela and Bishop Desmond Tutu. South Africa is Africa's largest gold producer. In 2006, it became the world's largest gold producer. We give this gift on behalf of our school, Sokop Moon Primary School, and we hope you appreciate it. And we love to say thank you for visiting our country, Namibia. We want to appreciate the gifts, and we really value the partnership with Swakop Moon Primary School. We'll continue working with you. On behalf of South Africa, we would like to present the gift to the teacher. And with this uh, little token of appreciation, we really value our partnership and we think that it's going to go far. Let us meet in Shanghai. Thank you very much. Be inspired. Be motivated. Enjoy this day. It is your time. Thank you. The One School, One Country program is a well-established cultural exchange initiative by the World Skills International. It offers a unique way to interact and, and share by linking up participating country teams with local schools. Its goal is, of course, to encourage cultural exchanges while raising the profile of skills and the skilled careers for the youth. So that Erongo region will become the first region where we will introduce at school level competitions between the different learners who are interested in vocational subjects so that we really have that awareness that skills development is very, very important in the country. I need you to build and build again, to make new, to bring forth life from relentless earth, making an oasis of charred terrain, creating refuge from only scar tissue. I need you. So with that said, we'd like to say thank you and welcome the team refugee um, in Namibia. Thank you very much. Welcome back to Skills Update. Now, Namibia was bestowed the right by World Skills International to host the second edition of World Skills Africa following the inaugural event staged in Kigali, Rwanda in 2018. More than 100 competitors from nine African countries plus team refugees are competing in 16 different technical and vocational trade areas at this year's event, which also includes an international TVET conference and a career exhibition. Now, the competition kicked off yesterday 
and our roving reporter Emil Sabep will be focusing for us on what's happening at the competition, at the skills competition site. And uh, we'll also be joined shortly by Ilago Shitatela, who will uh, talk to some of the exhibitors that are on the exhibition site. But for now, we're going to cross over to Emil Sebev to give us an update from the competition floor. Emil, over to you. Good afternoon, uh, Friendland. Good afternoon to our viewers. And of course, a very sunny and warm welcome to all our African partners. African countries which are joining us from the participating countries. Well, Friendland, yesterday we said the competition started, it was day one of the competition. And when I walked around, what I saw was somewhat what I, a person, not involved in technical. The things, waves are changing now, Friendland. This day, today when I started walking from stall to stall, when I speak to the chief experts, when I speak to the national experts, it seems and it appears that the competition is just getting tough. It's just starting today. Behind me, I'm at the Mechatronic stall. Before World Skills Africa Swakopmund 2022, I only knew of the existence of a word mechatronics. These guys here have, when they got here, what we see now in the background, maybe the cameraman can just show us this. They were in boxes. It was just boxes lying around. Um, what they have to do is to construct and build this robotic tool that can, at the end of the day, separate colors. It must move and then it must separate the yellows from the blues. I also visited the welding se uh, section today and I'm joined by chief expert from the welding section, welding skill set, Malcolm Marega. How are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you, and thank you for having me here yeah. today. You explained to me the task for today. Of course, I'm not a welder. It was very technical. How did yesterday go? What are we expecting today? Right. So yesterday went really well. We started off by uh, getting the competitors to perform what we call fillet welds, pipe welds, and uh, butt welds. So these three types of welds are basic welds that are then needed to execute the more complicated task that they will start to execute later on today. The task that they'll be uh, producing later on today is a pressure vessel. And this pressure vessel has got to utilize the various types of welding positions that they started on yesterday, which is the fillet, butt, and plate welding, so that they can actually put together this item. It's a little bit complicated, but we think that all of the competitors are quite up to the task. We also spoke um, that you are here with Team Refugee. I see on the other side, Team Refugee is in the web development technology. Um, they have got about 50 seconds before they complete their task. Her name is Jess. Uh, just tell us about why is there only one refugee here? Uh, we only have one refugee here because of a key challenge that refugees often have. Refugees often have a challenge traveling from one country to another because they have to uh, attain a different kind of passport that allows them to travel with their refugee status. This has been a challenge to get them issued in the countries that they are refugees in. So for example, we have refugees in Kenya, we have refugees in Uganda, we have refugees in Ethiopia. And this was a challenge that was faced by most of the refugees that we have in those countries. We are hoping that even out of this experience and working well in advance, we'll be able to lobby our governments to actually give refugees a better chance or better opportunities for travel far and wide and also particularly because some of the challenges that they do have are in relation to getting proper skills and education in the various countries that they're in because many refugees actually reside in camps rather than mixing with the national population. So there are various challenges that they face, but we are glad that opportunities such as world skills actually exist, whereby we can actually start to change the opportunities that refugees have across the continent. National expert Malcolm Marega, um, he's overseeing the welding section. Uh, like we said, guys, we are broadcasting live, that is from Sokopmont MTC Dome for the World Skills Africa Sokopmont 
only the second time that this is happening uh, on the continent. You can also follow the World Skills Africa social media page or the NBC Digital News social media pages where we give hourly updates of what is happening. Now, I also spoke to the kitchen. Um, the cooking skills set. Uh, I spoke to Chef Sean earlier today and Chef Sean told me uh, today's, today's challenge is a bit more intricate. Contestants and competitors are supposed to do a fish dish. Now when we say we are going to cook fish, you know, you put a bit of cooking oil, then you fry it. No, but they have to do a grade. It needs to be hotel quality. That is what is happening at the cooking skill set this afternoon. I also saw the restaurant services preparing in detail using the thumb to measure. Um, that is the space between the knife and the fork. There is a certain technique that these guys use uh, to lay out the, 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 the forks. There is a certain technique that they use to table, uh, to, to lay out the tablecloth at the brick layers. Also a very, very technical challenge awaits them today as they have to build an elephant, a structure of an elephant using bricks into the wall that they created yesterday. At the automobile section, um, we have Team DRC, we have Team Namibia, and we have Team Uganda. Now these teams are given individual challenges. Namibia has to focus on steering and steering, uh, while DRC has to focus on the brakes and Team Uganda has to focus on the engine overhaul. These gentlemen only have three hours to complete their task. It's a lot of activity. The competition is just getting tense. On Saturday, uh, we have the metal giving ceremony, so the best men will win. For now, we are crossing over to a break. Okay, my name is Mary Ann Akwenye, and I'm the founder of the Nomad Institute. Nomad uh, Institute is a training facility that started off training young women within the wellness space. So whatever um, led to them being excluded from the, the, the schooling system, that's where it started, that we give them the skill of wellness, being massaging, holistic treatments, and then they start work. Um, and from that we have expanded into a program that takes a visually impaired woman to give them the same skill. And it's also proven scientifically that one, when one sense is um, lost, another one is heightened. So it's just so happened that it's very fitting that they work within the wellness space. Inclusivity is very important um, because as a society we have to be inclusive. Um, and we're not excluded from it. But when it comes to education and, and skills upliftment, there is no such uh, 
place where, where people with disabilities can come and, and get an education. So that is where our foundation has started from. It's a very, very important platform and that is really why we fought to be here. One, to create awareness because as a society sometimes we, we are not aware that there are opportunities for the loved ones that we have that they can also uh, upskill themselves and be active members of society. Um, and this is a really important platform for other skills, for people to realize that there are other skills that they can learn and empower themselves. And, and that is why we, we really think that it is an important event to be hosted. Welcome back. You're watching a live broadcast coming to you from the Dome in Swakopmund, where World Skills Africa 2022 is underway. Now, the TVET conference underway here at the World Skills event is supported by the African Union Commission, the African Union Development Agency, and GIZ. A selected group of leaders from industry and academia are sharing their and rich experiences to discuss the opportunities and the challenges across the skill ecosystem. Now, one of the inspiring speakers is Ms. Pinky Sitole from Eswatini. Pinky is a qualified public relations practitioner, research assistant, as well as an entrepreneur. Pinky was born with albinism and as a result is visually impaired. Good afternoon, Pinky. But that last part does not define who you really are, does it? No, it definitely doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> now, you had to drop out of your university in your first year. Mm. Tell us what led to that decision. What, what, what was the challenge that you had at the time? Okay, um, so initially I had enrolled for a bachelor's in science and the biggest problem was that I could do maybe the theoretical subjects, but there were subjects such as mathematics, so the board was a bit far, and um, I, w I didn't do really well, so I had to repeat it, and then as uh, I wrote my mom a letter actually, and I told her I don't think I can do it because they did not have the resources to yeah. support me, mm -hmm. so then I had to drop out. And what did you do after you dropped out? Um, so when I dropped out, I wrote a letter to the Scholarship Association of Swaziland to ask that they transfer my scholarship to a university that has um, uh, facilities for people who are visually impaired. Um, unfortunately, they told me that they are looking at having facilities in the next five years. Um, and then I was like, well, I can't wait five years. I'm exactly. getting old, yeah. right? So what happened was, fortunately, I have a very good mother. So she decided um, we pay for it, and I had to work for a year to ensure that um, I have the money to go to varsity in South Africa. So you had quite a, a very supportive structure around you, especially for your family. Yes, yes, very much so, from so a very young age. Now, um, if you look at the, the unemployment rate, especially in, 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 in African countries, Namibia is no exception, neither is Eswatini. But this challenge in particular has inspired you to become an entrepreneur. Tell us more about that. Well, I found that even when I was doing my work integrated learning for public relations is a lot of companies do have the quota that they hire people with disabilities mm -hmm. and they might provide services but then it's almost like they're just putting a number to say that they can do it but how are they making sure that this person moves up mm -hmm. in their company so i found that that was really not there mm -hmm. so um 
I just decided that it's just better for me to work for myself. That's even better. And at the end of the day, um, you don't want to be a token, you know. And sometimes people with disabilities, people are always thinking of the weaknesses. Just like any employer, you have your strengths and you have your weaknesses. So the employer has to really leverage, you know, where you are good at. But I found that um, it didn't work that way. So I started entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then from entrepreneurship, you, P Pinky, also, you know, especially during the COVID-19 period, a, a huge challenge faced, especially by African countries, is how, you know, how do we get our kids to still go to school? And it was difficult to do that. And you ventured into something like online schooling for children. Tell us more about that. Yes. And um, so the, really the biggest inspiration is just having even little nephews who are supposed to be in grade one, but they don't know anything, they cannot read. Then it's like, what is the solution? Are we like me going to say again, wait until wait COVID? Or five is, years. Or five years, or COVID is over. It's not going to happen. So we decided um, with a group of friends actually mm -hmm. to start an online school school at um, in Swaziland. It was actually the first one. We're still running it. Uh -huh. um, you know, when you are starting something, you expect that the market is going to be receptive, especially when you think of how parents are going to be about it. But yeah. it, it was challenging, and it still is, especially because also I have albinism. Yeah. If I go to government offices or anyone, mm -hmm. before they see my capabilities, they might see what I cannot do. For example, I might r write a letter to you and ask you for a certain service. I come to you. And you know, when I read, it's here, the paper is yeah, here. Yeah. And people sometimes judge how good you are because of that. And then they think, mm, maybe not so good, you uh -huh. know, that type of thing. And so. how do you respond to, um, you know, uh, attitude and, and uh, from people like that? Because it doesn't look like that, that in any way deterred you to continue, uh, uh, you know, achieving everything that you wanted to, to in life. Yeah. So again, it really goes back to my mother. I know I can't, you know, I can't really say it enough. The importance of caregivers, mm -hmm. you know, bringing up the confidence, giving the same education they would give to a person who is not, you know, who is okay, who doesn't have visual impairment. You know, um, I find that with a lot of people with disabilities, whether it's um, albinism or anything like that. We live in a society where everyone forgets about them. And then when it's older, it's like, oh, how are we going to support them? But if from a very young age, you're building up their confidence. For me, my mom, even with construction, because recently I had to do um, like construction. Yeah. Like we go out and we build and I just learn a skill. My mom, I always told my mom, the sun is hot. And my mom is like, well, if the sun is hot, here's a sun block, here's a hat, here's long. Life so goes she, on. Yeah, life goes on. So sometimes I feel in trying to be understanding, you don't give people the same opportunities and mm -hmm. allowing them to fail and saying, okay, this you can't do because, because honestly, I have to be honest with myself. There are certain things that I cannot do because of my eyesight but give the people the opportunity to try it out and then say, maybe this is not for me. And finally, Pinky, what are you learning from um, World Skills Africa 2022 so far? Um, for me, one of the things is just um, because we have a system in Swaziland where they do actually educate people with um, disabilities, mm -hmm. but I've seen that we don't have people who are educators who have disabilities. Because sometimes we might have organizations that cater to people with disabilities, but do they really know the struggle? If you've never had it, you can understand intellectually, but also there's the emotional level. You know, people say certain things, and as a person, you can just say, oh, just get over it, you know? Yeah. Or just, you need to, but when it's a person who's also done it, it's easier to listen to them. So I really think that's the one thing that I'm taking back home. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Sitole. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank uh, you. Presenter, entrepreneur. Um, it was really such a pleasure to have met you. And kudos to your mom for raising such a fine, well, young, smart woman like you. Thank you. you.
Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so Queen much for Queen. the opportunity. Thank you. We'll be crossing over, I understand, to Ilago Shitatela, who is at the exhibition hall. Now, both local as well as international exhibitors are participating at the World Skills Expo. We cross over now to Ilago to find out what's happening down there. Ilago. Thank you so much, friend Lynn. As you mentioned, I am here at the exhibition hall, and here I have the Namibia Training Authority on my left as they are exhibiting some of their products and services here as they are the custodians for technical, vocational and educational and training in Namibia and they've also partnered with the NBC making this possible. That is the broadcast of World Skills Africa Swakopmund 2022. Now, in addition to the Namibia Training Authority, we have various TBET organizations also showcasing their services and products. One of those is the Hana Nangula. Hana Nangula is a makeup artist here in the country, very successful and skilled at her work, and also a makeup artist at the NBC. Now, Hana Nangula is here exhibiting at the World Skills Africa Swakopmund 2022, and I'd like to chat to her to find out how this is going. Hana, hi. Hi, Lago. How are you? I'm well, thank you very much. Uh, you have a, a very beautiful setup here at the Ward Skills. Please explain to us what is going on here exactly. Thank you, Elago, for making a turn at my stand. So basically, we are here selling the Nana Nangula products, and we are also giving uh, makeup training. As you know, skills development is what drives the economy of Namibia. So what products are you exhibiting? I'm seeing uh, lipsticks and, and your makeup line. Just walk us through the products that the Hana Nangula brand owns. So basically, we have a makeup uh, uh, makeup uh, line, and we also have a skincare line where you need to invest in your skin in order for your skin to be smooth. And we also have makeup products. We have powder, we have lipsticks, we have uh, brow pencils, and on the skincare line, we have cleansers, toner, we have the body lotion, and the body scrubs. Hana Nangula, the World Skills Africa Swakopmund 2022 is emphasizing on skilled work and skilled uh, workers and, and just uh, putting effort in, into skills. So explain to us exactly how skills is important to you being so successful in this industry yourself. The company doesn't only uh, sell the product, as you've mentioned, you also have training that you're doing and we do see uh, beautiful women in the background there. Explain to us what's happening at the background. So basically what is happening is uh, I am teaching my students on how to do makeup. They can also have a career in basically, start a career in learning how to do makeup. They can do makeup on their client. As you all know, when you want to go out, you need to look like this. And really in makeup, there is a career. You can start a, uh, a career in makeup. And it's very, very successful because in order for me to come up with my cosmetic uh, brand, it all, it was born by makeup. Mm -hmm. Well, Hannah, thank you for those attending uh, the World Skills Africa Swakopmund 2022 coming to your stand. What has the reception been like? It, has, it is really, really successful. Basically, uh, we got new customers, not just that, also uh, the brand awareness. People know that, don't know about Hana Nangula. They do know us just because uh, we are here. Thank you, Hannah. Now, there you have it. These are some of the exhibitors that we have here. That is the Namibia Training Authority and Hannah Nangula, amongst many other TVET organizations here at the World Skills Africa Swakopmund 2022. It's back to you, friend. Bom, 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 bom. Welcome back. We slowly but surely coming to the end of this hour of skills update. Uh, but I, before I go, uh, you do not have to at all miss out on what's happening at World Skills Africa Swakopmund 2022 because you can find a lot of uh, information on social media pages. Right now, I'm having a look at the World Skills Africa uh, Facebook page. This is where you can go if you want to, um, you know, see all the interviews that are happening, all the information that is there. You can find a lot of inserts. Here they are talking about day two of World Skills Africa, focusing on uh, the conference. Um, you would also see that um, if you've missed out on, on the opening 
of, of World Skills, the opening ceremony, you can also go to the World Skills Africa site where you can definitely uh, catch up with what's happening there. So quite a lot, and of course, do not forget that you can also go to NBC social media pages. You can also go to, to YouTube where you can have a close look at the events that were taking place here uh, since uh, World Skills Africa uh, 2022 Swakopmund started on Monday. And I think that's a wrap. We thank you so much for having joined us for Skills Update. Patrick Sam will be back with you tonight between 7 and 8, where he will take an in-depth look and also um, analyze uh, discussions uh, that have been taking place, especially at the TBET conference, also underway here at World Skills Africa 2022 Swakopmund. From myself, Brandon Thomas, thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, take care. Be a man of bravery, how quick I say cake This is what you are, go with us a hoka. This is what you are, go with us a hoka. Be a man of bravery. Don't think I say cake This is what you are. Go quick, Sahoka. This is what you are.